Well, hello again there, everybody. This is Clint Finney for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web presentation, June the 18th, 2020. Uh, this week, I wanted to touch a little bit more, go a little more in depth on a topic that I alluded to last week. We were talking about the spring flush and how we have too much forage this time of year. And I talked about if we don't have too much forage this time of year, then we've got too many animals. And uh, I've had some other conversations with some other producers about why they have the number of livestock they have in the last few weeks. And I thought it would be good to talk about right size in your operation. This is one of those key times of the year that we can kind of look at our operation and decide, do we have too many animals or not enough, I guess. So we're going to talk about right sizing our operation. Let's get started. So again, last week I, I talked about um, spring flush and and having too much forage and if we don't have enough forage out there right now that we we may have too many cows or too many animals and, and i hope that all of you know I, that i'm not trying to slight the, sh the sheep producers or the other livestock species producers by talking about cows i know that when i'm talking about cows or cattle i'm talking about just about any grazing animal if we don't have enough forage this time of year then, then we're, we're in trouble. We've got some issues. If we go out and walk our pasture fields and we can see the tops of our shoes in almost every pasture, we've got too many animals out there on the pasture field. Uh, our grass is never going to be better in this year than it is right now. Um, the spring flush always brings us more forage than any other time of the year will ever bring us. So if we're using that all up right now. Uh, we're not going to have enough come fall. We're not going to have enough if we get an extended dry period here this summer. So this is a time we want to look around and say, do we have too many animals? And, and what are we gonna do about that? Uh, and I guess from my standpoint, I, I kind of look at this from some conversations I've had with other producers about why they have so many cows. And also, um, just to give you a little background into what's going on at, at Spring Valley Farm right now, um we've lost some rented ground this summer and so that's taken forced us to take a hard look at how many cows we have and and why we're keeping that many cows and are we going to be able to keep that many cows in the future now the rented ground that we lost was hay ground uh, we can make that up we can buy some hay we've got lots of options that we can go through but uh also the forage production as far as hay yield for us has been down a little bit this year so not only were we already going to miss out on some hay ground, but we're also going to miss the yield in our, our current hay acreage. So uh, we've had to, to make some decisions. You know, do, do we have too many cows? Do we need to reduce the number of cows that we have or the number of cows we're going to carry? And so I, I guess as I think about this, uh, we all we all want to. As Pete Conkle said in our grazing council meeting here this winter, we all want to wear the big big hat and, and have a lot of cattle, but we have to remember that bigger isn't always better. Um, so often we have more cows than we actually should need or more livestock than we actually should have out there on the pasture. And maybe we'll step into that here as, as we go along and talk about why, but uh, we have to remember that bigger isn't always better. and and I hear this uh, banner about out there in the public all the time. Well, if I have more cows, then that means I make more money. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, more cows cost us more money in the end. And, and we're gonna talk about that here going forward, how having, having an extra cow more than what we can produce forage for uh, is actually costing us money in the long run. What we need to be concerned about is, is our cow days. How many cow days of forage do we produce? And, and hopefully that number is somewhere around 210 to 300 cow days per actual cow we have out there in the pasture field. I'm not concerned about cow numbers. Uh, when I go out and, and work with a producer, I, I, the only reason why I have to ask about cow numbers is because I need to have it to be able to run our grazing software and be able to calculate what their forage needs are. You'll notice when we go and do actual on-site pasture walks, we almost never post how many cows a particular producer has because it really doesn't matter to us the cow days is what matters the grazing is what matters the cow numbers in the end is just bragging rights um we're not telling anybody anything by telling somebody how many cows they have 
So for us, what it comes down to is, is calendar days. So if we're finding ourselves in a situation right now where we don't have enough forage, we don't think we're going to have enough forage to get through a dry period this summer or through the fall or have stockpiled grass this fall and going into winter. Most of us are coming up on breeding season. Uh, I know I've talked to some producers this week that are getting ready to turn bulls out. I, for one, haven't started calving yet, but that time is coming. And this is the time to start considering those culling decisions. We've got a, a window here after calving and before breeding, and we've got a window then after breeding that we really want to start thinking about whether we're going to send some cows to town or not. And I think it's a good idea for us all to keep a list of the cows that we have and kind of rank them out. And, and that bottom 5 to 10 percent ought to be leaving us anyway. We've got a good chance that a heifer is going to be better than that bottom 5 to 10 percent of our cow herd anyway. So uh, we need to think about moving those animals on now that we have a chance. The other thing to, to think about, and we've talked about this some with, with the grazing council, is if we lower our cow size, that allows us to run more animals. And and maybe that's a hard thought for some of us to, to gather together, but if, if we've got 1,200 pound cows and we over time lower our cow size to 1,000 pound cows, that means for every 10 of those 1,200 pound cows we had, we could have 11 1,000 pound calves or cows. <laughs> and, and that goes along with some other things, thoughts that I've heard from Kit Farrow for years was that, you know, people say, well, if I had a thousand pound cows, that means my feeder calves will be lighter at weaning time. Well, yeah, that, that, that is possibly true. Although if we've got more cows and they're a lighter weight, uh, you can look at the markets just about any week and see that, that 400 pound calves almost always sell for more by the pound than 500 pound calves. That's just the way that the world goes. So if we have more of them, then in the end, our operation is a little more profitable. Just thoughts um, quick about right size in your operation, about getting to the right number of animals or how to get to the right number of animals. We're going to talk some more here in another slide about why we might want to do that. Uh, what are some of the things that we're holding on to and reasons why we're keeping the number of cows that we are. And I included this quote at the bottom. Love your spouse, forgive your children, and do neither for your cows. That's uh, kind of a, a motto that I have taken up and kind of live by at home. I do have a cow or two that has a soft spot in my heart. Maybe it's a lead cow or a calf that I raised on a bucket. But outside of that, uh, if, if that cow isn't bringing me a calf every fall, then it's time for her to make up for the calf she didn't bring to me and send her on to town. Being that summer's here and it's nice outside and I'm moving sheep now twice a day, cows twice a day, trying to smash as much forage as I can. It all goes to see. Uh, trying to get some hay made here as time goes by. Uh, I knew this presentation was going to be a little shorter than normal, but I also wanted to, to do some kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, kind of uh, thoughts about why we have so many animals or why are we keeping so many animals. And, and, and I... I go to, to questions or, or answers or reasons why that I get from producers. And, and if you're that producer that I got this reason from, don't think that I'm picking on you because I'm not. I've used these same reasons for keeping a number of cows that I have over the years. Uh, and I actually just went through those reasons and kind of did a little bit of research on whether, whether that reason or rationale made sense for why I was keeping so many cows. So the first one up, I go out and talk with a producer and they say, well, I keep this many cows because that justifies owning a bull. And, and you can decide what number of cows that is, 25, 35, 40, whatever it is that you have in your mind that justifies owning a bull. But as I, I sat down and, and looked at that, I, I have made that same statement. I have thought that same thought at home that we keep this many cows because that justifies or it keeps the bull busy. But when I run that number through our grazing software, if we are keeping one extra cow just to keep that bull busy, that one extra cow is going to cost us about $500 in extra forage cost. So if we have enough 
forage out there, let's say to keep 29 cows, but not 30. But we're keeping that 30th cow because that's keeping the bull busy. That 30th cow is actually costing us more money in forage than her calf will probably produce. Uh, and if we take that up to two cows, we're keeping two extra cows for that one bull. That, that, that second cow is definitely costing us uh, more in forage costs. That second cow is probably costing us more, if you combine the two, than the bull will cost. So sometimes we think that we're justifying owning a few extra animals because we have to own that bull or ram or whatever. But in the end, uh, they're costing us more money. The other one I hear is, uh, and, I, and I've been told this for years, that the average cow size in the United States, cow herd size in the United States is around 25 cows. Uh, I've, I've been told that. I've repeated it. Uh, and so when I go out and talk to producers, they say, well, I keep about 25 or 30 cows. So I'm above average. So, so I'm a player in the game. I, I, I've got more cows than the average producer. But I went up and looked up in the statistics in 2017, which is the most recent data I could find. The average cow herd in the United States was 43.5 cows. Now, it just said cows. I, I'm assuming that's cow calf pairs. I, I, that may mean cows, heifers, bulls altogether. I don't know. But for, I'm going to take it as I read it, and it said 43.5 cows. I'm not sure where they got that 0.5 cows. Uh, I know it's really hard to split a cow in two, but they sure are easy to track because there's only two hoof prints. But uh, if the average cow herd is around 43.5 head, that means that most of our that we work with and in the Eastern Ohio council area, we're, we're mostly below average. And, and that's not a bad thing. I don't think we need to see it as a bad thing. Uh, and at, at that point, we need to make our operation the right size. Uh, quit holding on to trying to be above average or, or uh, be bigger than than your neighbor. Uh, we need to be at a size that is manageable for our operation. Then the other one I hear is, I, I want to have enough cows to matter. Well, how many is that? I, I don't know that I can put a number on how many cows we'd have to have to manage. I, I did some research and looked up the biggest uh, cow calf operation in the United States. Uh, I did some research on some some well known ranch names that I know from from the West and even from Hawaii that have a bunch of cows. Uh, but I had to do research to be able to pull those numbers off. I've got neighbors that have hundreds of cows that probably the rest of you in the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council community don't know their last name. So how many how many cows does it take to really matter? I don't know that there's a number and I don't know that we should be concerned about that. We should be concerned about our operation. So, uh, like I said, just a few tongue in cheek kind of thoughts and ideas and, and some some research and some study on some of those thoughts and rationale. As I said before, if you're one of those guys who's using those kind of reasons for keeping a number of cows that you do, don't don't feel ashamed that you're using them because I'll be the first to say that I've used those same reasons. For keeping a number of cows that I do and maybe it's time that we rethink those a little. For me keeping a number of cows as I mentioned before comes down to bragging rights and uh, so often we use that when we're out and about in in the world say well I have 35 cows or I have 40 cows or I have 50 cows and of course all of you probably realize that this is coming from from somebody who at one time we had 50 cows at home. We are now down to 26 cows as of today, we'll be down to 25 here shortly. And uh, with the loss of some rented ground, I, I would assume we'll be down to 20 cows by fall, uh, just because that's what's going to fit our operation. So again, kind of some tongue in cheek kind of ideas of, of instead of saying you have X number of cows, we should be thinking more toward I only have X number of cows, but and I just kind of come up with some reasons. I wanted to do a top 10 list, but I didn't have the time to come up with 10. But but my cows are, are fat and sassy. They're healthy. They're growing. They, they got fat cover on them going into the winter. Those are things that we need to be concerned about. I only have so many cows, but I have sheep or goats or pigs or all of the three that go along with my grazing operation. Uh, I only have so many cows, but I have an almost 100% calf crop. And this is a big one for me. If we've got too many cows we probably got some open cows and we don't want to have open cows we don't want to pay for open cows 
we want that calf crop to be at or near as best as we can get it to 100%. I'm not going to go into numbers of what number I think is good for a cow herd. That's for somebody else to do. But if we've got a less number of cows, we've got less number of head to watch, and we've got less number of head to have to figure out, are they bred or are they not bred? I've got only got so many cows, but I finish all my calves. Certainly one of my goals is to eventually grass finish all of our calves. Uh, and there are producers who are doing just that. I don't have I don't have very many cows, but I don't have to feed any hay in the summer. I'm telling you folks, I drive around the counties right now and I see some pastures that I feel must have to pack a lunch to get across. I see farms that are making hay and, and taking it simultaneously through the gate and feeding it to, to cows. Uh, this is not the time of year that we should be feeding hay. And and it really, we get to July and August, unless it gets really, really dry, we shouldn't have to feed hay then either. I mean, I know there are producers that do, and it's a part of their plan and how they operate, but we shouldn't have to feed hay in the summer. This is the time when we've got sunshine and rain and the weather to grow forage, and we should be growing and grazing forage in this time. I don't have that many cows, but I don't have to feed much hay through the winter. That's where we kind of want to get our folks in Eastern Ohio Grazing Council. Uh, Haymaking is our most expensive uh, proposition in a cow-calf or any grazing operation. That winter feed and, and winter stored feed is the most expensive feed we will feed through the entire year. I don't have that many cows, but I produce X number of grazing days. I would like for us all to get to a point where we know how many grazing days we have. And that is going to be a big number. If we're one of those people that really like big numbers, wow factor numbers, you take your, your number of grazing days per cow and multiply it by the number of cows you kept, and that's, wow, it's going to be a wow factor number. It's going to be over 100, and that's one of those numbers that, that I hear bannered about all the time. That century mark is such a huge deal to us in, in the United States. We can get to some pretty big numbers if we calculate how many grazing days we have on our farm. And then my last one, and, and you know me, I put it in red bold. I only have so many cows, but I'm profitable. And, and that's where we all would like to be. We've got to be profitable to be, to be sustainable. I think all of our operations ought to be sustainable as well. But we've got to be profitable to be sustainable. <clears throat> and then one thought I heard several years ago uh, from, a, from an old cow man. And someone asked him how many cows he had. And he said, Telling someone how many cows I have is like telling someone how much money I have in my wallet. Now, this producer had lots of cows, hundreds probably, uh, but it is an interesting thought. Uh, I would love for us all to get to a point where cow numbers weren't bragging rights. Cow days are bragging rights. Not having to feed hay is bragging rights. I don't know that we'll ever get there in this country, but I think it's a very cool thought for us to, to think about. Uh, it doesn't matter how many cows we have, it's how profitable we are. Well, that's a wrap for this week's Eastern Ohio Grazing Council presentation. I apologize to some of you. This is probably shorter and less in-depth than a lot of our web presentations, but as I said, the weather's good, and, and it's a great time for us to be out. We've also got some deadlines in here in the office that we're trying to meet, so uh, we're working hard for those. We'll end, as always, by thanking our sponsors. Uh, thank you to all of you who are listening in and, and enjoying our web presentations. Thanks for commenting and, and sending us uh, other topics and things. Uh, it looks like we will not have a pasture walk in, or I know we won't have a pasture walk in June. Uh, July is even looking in doubt at this point. So stay tuned uh, for more information on when we'll be able to get back to normal and have our in-person pasture walks. We'll be putting together a virtual pasture walk for next week again from here in Harrison County and I'll be looking for other web presentations coming up uh, on the Thursdays every week. Thanks again. We'll see you.